alcohol, uh, adding uh, partial bleach and glacial acetic acid, and then you'll get up a ketone. Um, the way this reaction works is the bleach and the acetic acid uh, form together in situ, uh, which is contained in the reaction mixture, um, your actual oxidizing agent, HOCl. HOCl will then attack your um, alcohol, it'll make this cation, which will then get um, a hydrogen extracted from the water, and then you'll be left with your ketone. And then to finish up, what we'll do is if there's any remaining acetic acid in solution, we'll neutralize it using sodium bisulfite and sodium bicarbonate. And then to get out of your solid, we will do uh, rapid filtration and simple disposal. Hello, uh, welcome to the oxidation of isoconium lab. We are making this video by keeping our protective equipment on, face mask, gloves, apron, lab, coat and then uh, goggles. We are more than 6 feet away and uh, to start this reaction, here this is our uh, in last year screen, we are going to use and this is a isoporium, sodium sulfate, saturated sodium bicarbonate, sodium bisulfide, glacial acetic acid and commercial bleach. So now we are going to weigh the isoporium and then we will set up the reaction as per the procedure which is in your PDF file. So let's start weighing the chemicals. Uh, so first what we're going to do is add 1 gram of isoboronol. Next what we're going to do is add 3 milliliters of the glacial acetic acid. It's very fast reaction, color change. Yes. How long we have to mix? So we'll start for 15 minutes and you can already start to see some uh, white solid precipitating. That's going to be your can for. Um, it's a very quick reaction. We'll start for 15 minutes just to make sure we get everything out. 15 minutes at room temperature? Yes. So now you can see it's all 15 minutes of reaction is over and we have here white precipitate. So next. Uh, the work is here we are going to do this uh, workup so let's start doing workup of this reaction this is the removal of ester bar sure this right now the separating funnel is open yes so always close and then add otherwise all the solution will come down another rinsing and here also we can use the micro spatula to kind of get everything off, off the walls and into the aqueous solution probably if we'll add ether 
it will dissolve right yes we can add ether here first So ether layer is on the top or bottom? Ether layer should be on the top. It's um, yes, it'll be the less uh, dense one. Okay. So, the rest the so organic layer is on the top. And then we have to. Well, first we're gonna shake, and we'll drain off all of the sodium. Uh, or I'm sorry, we're gonna drain off all of the remaining bleach and acetic acid that's left in this uh, aqueous layer. So I'm gonna cap it here and shake. It. Salt is all. Okay, so now all of our products are in here and all of our byproducts are down in here. So we're going to drain off just the aqueous layer. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a fine line that kind of separates the two. We're gonna yeah, stop you can see. It gets to there. So aqueous layer we are containing. Uh, collecting at the bottom, yes. from the bottom. Stop. So next what we're going to do, in case there is any like trace amounts of acetic acid left in here, we're going to add uh, these neutralizing agents, sodium bisulfite and sodium bicarbonate. Um, first it will be two mils of the sodium bisulfite. So that's this right here. making sound oops awesome. and once you get in you should see a little bit of your aqueous layer at the bottom and then your yeah. rest up here is this is uh, your pan pour that is sodium bisulfite 2 ml yes so we'll turn that off yeah i think we have to open from the door yeah So what we're going to do is we're going to rinse with 10 milliliters of sodium bicarbonate. We're going to do that twice just to make sure we get every little bit of the acid out of here. So this is all removal of remaining uh, acetic acid, glacial acetic acid, right? Yes. So 10 ml two times. Oh, you can see the bubbles. Yes. So this bubble is because uh, look like there is some acetic acid mm -hmm. which is reacting with the sodium bicarbonate and uh, producing carbon dioxide gas. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for this to settle down a little bit before I yeah. cap it. Otherwise, it will be will. make a lot of pressure inside. Yeah, that's the reason why this is such an important thing to vent because if you build up too much pressure, this glassware can explode. Mm. And then depending on what's inside, that can get all over you, as well as all the glass. be very careful at this stage removal of uh, pressure is very important 
एक्स्ट्रा गैस एंड डोंट कीप इट इन योर फेस इट शुड बी अवे फ्रॉम योर फेस जनरेट लॉट ऑफ गैस So after this, uh, we will add one more time. Yes, we'll add ten more mils. Okay. Bottom layer is aqueous layer. and the top is a uh, ether layer so we'll uh, remove this uh, bottom layer and uh, collect into the same aqueous container it will be advised that go slow otherwise you will lose some ether now we are very close to the bottom and done now we have organic ether layer which we are going to wash one more time with the saturated sodium bicarbonate and after that we will dry it so here we are measuring one more time 10 ml so we measured out another 10 ml of the saturated sodium bicarbonate just to get the last bit of acetic acid out and you see it's not bubbling quite as much anymore so it look like there is not much acetic acid left it's already gone this pressure is also creating because of the diethyl ether so we have to mix at least 3 time 4 5 time Almost done. Yes. So we're gonna let the layers separate again. You can see the line right here. Mm. Now what we're gonna do is drain off this last um, aqueous layer, and then our organic layer. We're going to dry it over sodium sulfate. This is just to get any remaining water out of the solution. now we have to dry the ether layer yes so we're going to go ahead and put the ether layer just directly into the beaker the beaker will be dry all the glass wares must be dry sodium sulfate works is it uh binds with water and when it does it kind of congeals into a blob so just a pinch or one spoon yeah so you don't need much um a good rule of thumb is you want to add it until you don't see any more kind of free loading free or until you see free floating particles mm -hmm. because if everything is kind of into a blob that means that there's water still in the solution and if there's free floating particles then that means 
that there's no more water, which is the point of this step, is to get all the water out. I think I'll add just a little bit more, since it's all kind of stuck together on the bottom. This is a filter paper. Yes, and I just kind of folded it so that it would fit into the funnel nicely. Mm, to stop any solid going inside. Yes. And as you see, it's mostly kind of congealed together on the bottom. Right. It's not really any in solution. Yay, so here we have camphor in the ether. Camphor solution. Yes. And the next part is a Next part, um, we're going to need to isolate the camphor out of the ether. Um, the reason we used ether as our aqueous solvent, or I'm sorry, as our organic solvent, is because it has a very low boiling point. It's very easy to get um, to evaporate with just a little bit of heat. So we're going to do a simple distillation. The ether will come off, and it will remain in the round bottom glass with the air camphor. Okay. So we're about to set up the simple distillation apparatus. Um, first thing that you want to do is add your ether layer into your round bottom glass. If you set the whole thing up without having it in there, you're gonna have to take apart part of it to get your uh, product back into the round bottom. So we're gonna add this first. We'll also throw in a boiling stone or two just to kind of help the ether boil. Um, it's also important, anytime you're heating glasser, you want to add grease to your joints. It's, you don't need much, just about maybe that much. And it's pretty a small amount. Yeah, and you want it kind of on the top half. If you mm -hmm. get it too low, it'll get down kind of into the lower half of the joint, and it can get into your reaction mixture mm -hmm. and kind of mess things up. So you want to try to keep it up top to where it's out of your actual so reaction. Whenever you add it, you want to turn it around. So grease must be on the upper half of the neck. Yes. And are we going to add any boiling chip in this? Uh? Yes. So I'm going to grab two boiling stones. And we're going to add one to So boiling stones we add not to bump up. provide for a good source um, for yeah. the boiling to start. It just kind of helps uh, for the kind of splashing. And now we have to set up our condenser. Yes. And same thing is here. So everywhere we have to add very small amount of grease. Just half neck. And slide the condenser. So this is the simple distillation assembly we are going to set up here. It's also important to, once you get your grease on, these joints will kind of want to slip out, so you want to make sure you remember to put your clips on. These condenser pieces are about $180, so you don't want it to slip off. So we have our apparatus assembled. Um, it's important to put your blue clips on as well as grease on all of your joints. Um, you need to make sure that the hose from the water in is at the bottom and the hose for water out going into the sink is uh, at the top up here. And then whenever you turn it on, you need to be very careful to not turn it on too violently. Oh. So water is coming from the bottom? Yes, yeah, so this is condensing, this is cooling this tube down. So um, 
once the gas, the ether gas comes in here, it'll condense back into liquid and come out into here. So we'll go ahead and turn this up to around four-ish. Ether's boiling point is pretty low, so it shouldn't take too much heat to get it going. Um, once all of the liquid is gone, you should just have a white solid around the rest of your ground bottom, and that'll be your, uh, your product. Uh, our distillation assembly is set up, and now you can see its ether is start boiling. So very soon it will condense here and all the ether will evaporate and it will condense in this container. It's very start one you can see very fast. Maybe I can slow a little bit. And while it is distilling, here is another fun part of this lab. All the dirty glass layers. So now it's time to clean up. So if you are working together, you can one of your partner can start cleaning. All the glass layers must be clean, dry for the next student who can run this reaction. So let's start to see the. So now with the distillation has completed, we can sell that by no more liquid left in the round bottom flask. Um, all that white solid is our product, it's our camphor. Um, and then what came out of the distillation apparatus, this is all diethyl ether. Um, so this is ether? Yes, this is all ether. And solid product camphor is here. So we, go, uh, we went ahead and turned off the heat. Next, what we're gonna do is scrape out that solid onto a watch glass and set it into the oven, um, just to make sure we get it completely dry so that we get an accurate mass. And we have to make sure that we should remove the two boiling chip from here. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, they will count in the weight. So now it's dry. up you want to try to break it up as much as possible just to kind of increase the surface area and make sure it dries evenly so now I have to dry this one yes yeah, so we'll put this in the oven at about 100 degrees Celsius uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure it's completely dry so we get an accurate weight after that we will be yeah. okay. so we just finished drying the camp for in the oven for about 15 minutes so it's nice and dry now so what we're gonna do is go ahead and get a weight for it gram almost 0.556 or 7 yeah yeah we lose a little bit there on the round bottom glass so to calculate the theoretical yield of isoboranol or I'm sorry camphor we started with the weight of our uh, reactants divided by the molecular weight multiplied by the molecular weight of the product and we come out with 0 0.987 grams of camphor that would be if we got 100 of the camphor, the reaction went perfectly to completion. But since it doesn't always go like that, um, we can use our percent yield formula to figure out um, how much of the yield we actually got. So this is our actual yield, this is our theoretical yield. Um, so we got just over half a um, percent of what we could have got. Um, it's not terrible, but it, it definitely could be better. Um, ways you can prove that percent yield is um, drying it better, um, scraping the wrap off glass better, just trying to get every little bit. Um, Spilling if you can, um, stuff like that. But this isn't a bad percent yield, uh, but it could be better. 
Okay, thank you very much. So I we hope that uh, you guys have learned from our video and this lecture the oxidation of isobornium. And once you complete all these experiment after watching this video, you have to complete all the uh, lab notebook and then complete all these uh, post lab questions which are very important to solve.